Let me say something. These guys can say, oh, I'm going to retire till the cows come home. But I guarantee you, he won't retire. We'll see him after 2025. Mm. And why not? If they say, hey, we got a shot for you, blah, 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 and you'll make this. He can say, oh, no, I'm retired. Hello, hello, hello. It is me. It is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3. We are back once again with another pre recorded edition of Smack Talk. We are not talking about SmackDown this week. I am with the legendary manager, wrestler, creative mind, and the greatest mustache to ever come into professional wrestling, the cigar wheeling, we the people saying, Dutch Mantel. Well, <clears throat> Does everybody know that you're in London? I, I mean, I, I, I've made it. I've made it public news to everybody. That oh, okay, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm in the UK for the summer. Oh, you're staying the, for the summer? Yes, for the summer. For the summer. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, not being nosy, but why the summer? Most people go oh, my, a week. My, my Two missus, weeks. my missus, my missus is doing it's doing work out here, and I, I I can work from anywhere, so it's it's beneficial that I can come with her and we can bring the well, kids great. and it's quiet. Well, so, great, it's nice, very good, congratulations. But you, you don't have the you don't have an English accent. No, yeah. no, not yet. My 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 daughter does talk to her. She got the English she, accent going. Is she all day. She getting it? Yeah, on, she, she, yeah, she got it already. already. She oh, got it already. Good. But don't worry, folks. It's not just me and Dutch. We got the third member of our team, radio co-host extraordinaire, Cincinnati's own. What Ricky up? Gino is here as well. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how smooth I did that. Look at how smooth. Oh, that, was, that was much better than what I could do. That was how that, smooth that was I did that. Didn't Rick, have to pause about, anything. It's about friggin' time you got here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. You want to know why I was late? I fell asleep. I stone cold fell asleep. I woke up. No, you didn't. No, I swear to God, I did. Like I woke up and I was like, 4.30, didn't I have something to do with... F- Son of a... <laughs> And I rushed. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, guys, I'm, it's nine o'clock where I'm at. Like, y'all. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I had to get up at like three thirty for work this morning, so I, I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lay down. Everything's cool. I'm gonna relax before we do the show, and everything's gonna be fine. And then I must have set my alarm for uh, for a.m. instead of p.m. like an idiot. And well, yeah, well, don't worry. Exactly what I did. The source key to people won't put this in the in the edit, will they? Maybe. We don't possibly. Know. Hey, I, this is I, the I'm best part here. of the show. I'm still here, <laughs> this, baby. Let's go. This best part of the show. All right, let's go. So we're going to talk about some money in the bank. We're also going to talk about one of Dutch's uh, friends that he is uh, very close to that we need to send our love to and talk about during the show. And we got some other topics to discuss, like Mercedes Monet's creative control and whatnot, uh, coming off the heels of Forbidden Door, where she's a double champion. But we'll get into all that. We're going to start off with money in the bank, Dutch Mantel, because big news coming out of money in the bank is the one of the greatest of all time john cena has announced his retirement from wwe he's going to be retiring in 2025 we want to hear from you first up dutch your experience working with john cena during your last run with wwe and what was your reaction to his retirement announcement well i'm i'm kind of amazed he even made it because he's 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 got such a reduced schedule now, he may as well be retired. But he did come out, and I, I'll say one thing: he appreciates pro wrestling, appreciates the fans, and even though Vince is engaged in all this other stuff, and he's been charged with a lot of stuff, still uh, he owes his success strictly to one man, and that's Vince McMahon. But he didn't roll over on him. He says, yeah, he said, I love the guy. So at least he says that. At least he's truthful with that. And he meant a lot to wrestling. And, uh, of course, I, I remember when he was in the, the, the farm system, when he was in Louisville at the, 
OVW uh, factory up there. And I, met, I went up there one time. I made a shot in OVW, and I think he was there, but I can't remember. I just went in and out. But, you know, he was, uh, he, he is still over, like I say, over like Rover. He's still over like a son of a gun. People still like him, and uh, and he appreciates them. So he's not the type to make a lot of money in wrestling, then get out and kind of, kind of crap on it. And I've seen people do that too. You know, they have like, yeah, I was in wrestling, I didn't, you know, I didn't really enjoy it that much, blah, 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 but but he's not that way. So he, is he gonna have a tour next year, 2025? Yeah. Is that what he's gonna do? His last yeah. match on all these big big shows like the, like Madison Square Garden and from what it sounds and Baltimore. Like. From what it sounds like, and he ran through some of the details in the uh, post-show uh, media scrum on Saturday night, this, this to me, sounds like kind of a full-year tour. He's going to have dozens of dates that he's going to be doing throughout the year, uh, and it's from January all the way through December next year. Yes, the Royal Rumble is going to be his last match or at the Royal Rumble. Yes, it's going to be his last WrestleMania, but he's going all the way through December next year. So he is going to – it sounds like he's doing one final full run uh, with WWE as an active competitor, and then he is hanging up the jorts for good. And the next time you see him on WWE programming, because December is not going to be the last, it's going to be in some kind of a capacity where he's an ambassador to the company. He's not going to do anything on screen. He's not going to do anything physical. He says he's done. He's going to be done. I and I honestly, the way he talked, I kind of believe him. I don't think this is going to be a, a kayfabe. Hey, we need a Saudi Arabia paycheck kind of thing. Uh, I, I think he's going to be done at the end of 2025. Let me say something. These guys can say, oh, I'm going to retire till the cows come home. But I guarantee you, he won't retire. We'll see him after 2025. Mm. And why not? If they say, hey, we got a shot for you, blah, 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 and you'll make this. He can say, oh, no, I'm retired. But you can make this. Oh, well, maybe I can come out one night, maybe. You know, just for my fans. I think we'll yeah. see him on TV, but SP3, maybe back me up on this one. I, I think I think this is a guy who's seen the writing on the wall for a while, and he knows the limitations of what he's going to be able to do in the ring and what he, still, what he currently can do uh, in the ring, and I, I think he is ready to walk away at this point. I, it's miraculous we're going to be getting a full-year run out of him for next year. Check out Brain Buster, the daily quiz that tests your WWE knowledge with winning streaks, stats, and more. It's time to see if you're up for the challenge. Yeah, I think that he is ready to walk away, but I kind of lean towards Judge, and maybe it's because I realized this weekend, I'm a jaded wrestling fan. I've lived through... You just under- now realize that? Yeah, I just J- realized Jaded? I'm, really? I'm jaded because I, I lived tell. through... I lived through The Undertaker telling me he was going to retire like 87 liar, times. Liar, I lived through Ric Flair doing a whole retirement ceremony God, at WrestleMania hey, I had a whole new career. I lived through Shawn Michaels retiring at WrestleMania 26 only to come back as ball Shawn Michaels in 2018. <laughs> so I tend to go on my jaded side and be like, mm, Okay, we'll do the retirement tour, but I wouldn't be surprised if CM yeah. Punk is right that he can talk you yeah. into coming back in 15 yeah. years. I wouldn't I'm going to retire, but don't hold me to it. <laughs> Who knows what might come up, you know. Yeah, but how many of those guys had John Cena Hollywood money? This is true, Several but Several we, we also love them. We also we also got the rock. Did. The Rock, yeah. the Rock probably was under the understanding that WrestleMania uh, 29 was going to be his last matchup, and now he's back 10 years later, and he's the biggest heel in the company. So, probably going to win the WWE title at WrestleMania 41. So, uh, well, we'll see how those things shake out. I, all right. So, the the question though for a lot of people, not not to steal your thunder here, SB3, and kind of, uh, I think he's trying to steal your stuff. No, 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 no. I, passed, I passed the rock. I passed the rock. You, oh, okay, you, fair you, enough. All right. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know if we were, if we, you know, we, if you want to, you know, kind of trade back and forth through one A, one B, whatever it is. Uh, I'm, I'm the idiot. I'm the guy who fell asleep. But a lot of people are going to talk about what this year long run is going to look like. Let's just assume. Let's not take the jaded role. This is John Cena's last run in WWE. We're never going to see him in the jorts again once 2026 hits and beyond. What should that? look like you know should 
Uh, everybody's going to say, should he have one more opportunity at the WWE Championship? Should he break the all-time record? What's the storylines that or is he's going to look at? Um, very easy for him to come out, win the Royal Rumble next year, and challenge for the WWE title at WrestleMania. They could do that if they really, really wanted to. Dutch, what do you want to see out of this next run? What should it what, what should it look like for John Cena next year if he's doing a year-long run? Well, for me, what I'd like to see is I don't give a crap one way or the other if he does it or not, but most fans would. And I think he'll make, you know, just the really, really big arenas and some pay-per-views. I, I'm, I'm going to imagine SummerSlam. I think he'll be on WrestleMania because it, not only does he have a match, it's his last match that they'll ever see him in. So, and we'll see him in the Garden and the Boston Garden. We'll see him in Chicago and, you know, just their big, big towns through the ages have kept that company in business. So, uh, um, but the last time I saw him was WrestleMania when he went up against Austin Theory. Was that? No, the, he, he showed he up at WrestleMania to interfere in the Cody and Roman match. Before that, he got obliterated okay. by Solo Sokoa. Last year. Well, I'll say one thing for him. He does what's best for business. He don't say, if, if you put, let's put you, let's put somebody else in there. If you put like, uh, name some big star that's quit and coming back. Name something. Brock Lesnar. But would Brock go out there and do it? I doubt it. Because he don't have to do it, first off. But would he do it? But I think, I think John would. For the sake of the business, and that's what I like about him. Because he didn't get over by himself. He got over with a lot of guys putting him there and a lot of creative doing these really good things with him, keeping him on top, keeping him the center of attention. So, and let's face it, he's not the greatest wrestler in the world, but still, they got him over. People love him and sold a lot of merchandise. And believe me, selling merchandise in WWE that's almost as good as doing a sellout. Because now they see you making the money when you're sitting at home. Because there's people ordering that merchandise and ordering the shipping, shipping. And they check those ledgers, I like that word, ledgers. They check it every day to see who sold what. I remember when I was there as, as Zeb Coulter, I sold a shirt one time. It's one shirt, and it was a big deal. Because instead of saying big Zeb, just said big zero on my merchandise. It said one, and boy, I increased my production 100% in one night. And how many guys can say that? Not too many. But, uh, you know, John, I like to see him because he's still showing respect to the people that put him in that spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been a John Cena fan since uh, before he put on the jorts when he uh, came in and said he had ruthless aggression against Kurt Angle. I'm so much of an old school John Cena fan. My aim, yes, aim screen name was J Cena KB8 because John Cena and Kobe Bryant were my two favorite people back in 2002, 2003. So mm -hmm. that's how far back I go as far as being a John Cena fan and as far as answering Rick's question of how I think this year is going to play out. WWE over the last couple of years have ended off their pay-per-view cycle, premium live event cycle with Survivor Series. But I would think that if John Cena is saying he's going from January to December, you can't have John Cena's last matchup on a random episode of Raw or SmackDown. I think they should make a whole premium live event in December for John John Cena. The last time is now. Call it by the t-shirt name. The last time is now in Boston, TD Garden. Do it mm -hmm. there to celebrate him in his home, his own town, home state right there, and do it up big for him and have him face whoever he wants to face. He can choose, you know, a greatest rival, a young star, however he wants to play it out. As far as WrestleMania goes, I think that you have three options that you could play with. You can go the usual Cena route over the last couple of years has been him putting over these young stars. Like Dutch mentioned, he had Austin Theory he put over at WrestleMania 39. That was, that was a mistake, I think. 
I did not work out that. well. No. And and I'm looking at it, I went, wait a minute. Austin Theory, they was getting ready to put the torch to him, but I didn't see it. And I says, listen to this crowd. They're saying, screw that. We ain't buying it. I don't it then didn't he, help it didn't help Theory at all. At all. Then he had then he had solo Sokoa, and that didn't work until recently. Until recently mm-hmm. that they started heating up solo, and you can call back to him beating uh, John Cena and stuff like that. But you know now I helped? think who I'm gonna say Gunther. Well, that's that's actually what I was going with, but I'm not I'm not thinking of him as far as putting over a new star. I would think it's Braun Breaker. It's the next yeah, guy okay. that he can that he can put over that he can put That's over good. strong at at I'm his agreeing. last WrestleMania. As far as like if you want to go the nostalgia route, when you think of Cena and he has a bunch of great rivals that are in WWE right now, like AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, CM Punk. A lot of them already kind of already have their big matchup for WrestleMania. So I would go the route of Randy Orton even though I would not put any of the a thousand matches those two guys have had in their, in either one of their top tens, I think that they are in their top five greatest rivals of each other. So that would be the big nostalgia one, but Dutch kind of stole my glory, but I would go the route of his final WrestleMania. You do the biggest story possible and you do him going for number 17. You yes. do him going for number 17 against the world heavyweight champion Gunther. Yes. Because not only are you playing out the biggest story possible for his last WrestleMania, him going for number 17 to be the greatest of all time, you're also celebrating a large amount of John Cena's career, which has been him versus the foreign heel. Him versus the foreign heel has kind of been how Cena has drawn the comparisons to Hulk Hogan, whether it be Cena versus a Samoan bulldozer. And it would be a, hell of a, be a hell of a match, too. And yeah, I and out of all the choices of anybody that that, that can face Cena, I think that there, Gunther is the one I have the most confidence in. He will give Cena his best match possible, but there's also the caveat there of Cena might say, "Hey, you might have to chill out on these chops. I have to do this next movie where I have to have my shirt on, and I don't want to be bruised all red." They so got makeup in Hollywood. I, not, yeah, I would, if I was Gunther, I'd, I'd hit him extra hard then. <laughs> I said, here, put some lotion on it or do some of that damn movie sh- where they can hide this stuff. I don't, I'm not, I'm not easing up on your ass. Screw it. Yeah, look, this is, that's the perfect avenue to go because I'm, I'm thinking ahead and I'm, and we'll talk about this when we get to the Money in the Bank briefcase. I'm looking at the landscape of the, of the men's world title picture right now. You can already put down Cody Rhodes and Rock and Red Pen. Like on yeah. that, that, that match is booked, signed, sealed and delivered. I do think Gunther is going to win the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, or excuse me, at Who SummerSlam. Predict- and and he ain't Who going to drop Gunther that. Fan? We we all are. Just chill, Dutch. No, uh, no but you, anyway, you, you didn't go. You didn't go all in on Gunther like me and Sid did. See, quit trying to damn steal the glory here. Me and Gunther. I mean, me and Sid saw it really seriously like years ago. Okay. Go, Anywho, go so. Gunther's going to win the World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam, and he's not dropping it for a very, very long time. So do you have Rock come out and win the Royal Rumble, or do you have uh, do you have whoever is going to be the challenger for Gunther at WrestleMania come out and win the Royal Rumble? Uh, depending on you know who it is, I mean, I don't think you can get much bigger than John Cena coming out there, finding a way to, to win the Royal Rumble in Indianapolis, and then stare down... You know, the possibility, like you said, the biggest story that you can tell with John Cena is going for number 17 and him going up against the guy like Gunther. I mean, that's that's freaking Rocky four, man. That's 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 Rocky but, who's been retired going up against Ivan yeah, Drago, but, like the impossible feat. Like we need Cena training in the Alps and everything like this. Like, let's go. Like, this is what you can do. This is the perfect story, the perfect WrestleMania match. And unfortunately for for Cena in this case, Rocky's not going to get the win. But hell, it's still a great story. It's still a great finish and a, a great last WrestleMania match for him. And I do believe Gunther will pull out the best match possible out of him. Oh, he will. I'm pretty sure of that. But hey, what if? What if? See, everybody expects Gunther to win, right? Yes. But what if that don't happen? You shock all the fans and all the betting guys. And uh, if they could figure out a way to do that and... S- I think that would set the world on fire. I don't think it would hurt Gunther that much anyway. Yeah. 
And it would solidify mm. Cena as the greatest of all time, him getting number 17 and yeah. surpassing Ric Flair. And I feel like I, I've heard people say, oh, he could get a shot at the 17 at SummerSlam or any other event. It doesn't mean as much as WrestleMania. And I'm not going to believe as much that he can win it at any other event. WrestleMania is enough time in April from when he's retiring in December where I could realistically see him winning and then dropping the title somewhere else. And there's a couple of different other matches as far as like the rest of the year goes out. I think that they should run Chicago for Money in the Bank next year and give me Cena and Punk again. If you're going to oh, do Cena and man. Punk, it has to be in Chicago. And I feel like Money in the Bank is the perfect place because of 2011 and their classic battle there. AJ Styles, I think he has to run that back with Styles because they left off on their hey, best we could match do that ever match in, in We could do that match in Gainesville, Georgia. That'd be you could do it in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. See? What do you think, yeah. Rick? Who is? I'm, I'm curious. Who is somebody that... Other than Gunther, is there somebody who's new on the roster that you'd like to see Cena go up against? Je uh, SP3, you mentioned Braun Breaker already. Maybe, maybe, what if, what if uh, Cena beats Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship and then he drops it to Braun Breaker at SummerSlam next year? I would be down for that. I would be I would be so down for that. Uh, I think as far as like new guys, I think he has to get one with Carmelo Hayes because of their whole relationship they connected on in NXT and they're both from Boston. That makes a whole lot of sense for him to go up against. Um, yeah, there's there's those are like the guys that stand out to me. And as far as WrestleMania, the the fourth kind of dark horse option out of the the people, you know, I said Orton, I said Braun, and I said Gunther. If I'm going for a dark horse out there, as far as like probably not possible, but it's the big, it's an even bigger match than those three. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, I I know nobody was wanna gonna wanna really see Ooh. two fifty year old. Not a lot of people are gonna want to see two fifty year olds out there, but. I'm saying it's all about the opening segment of the matchup, the first two minutes where they stare at each other and then look at the crowd. That's what it's all about. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, look, stare everybody at, was stare at the crowd. Everybody wants and look at. Go ahead. I was gonna say everybody wants to see Punk in Austin. So I mean, how 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 dissimilar is it to see Cena in Austin in the ring with one another? I mean, that's that's one of those holy sh moments. I can't believe this is actually happening. We're getting this. Is it 30 years too late? Absolutely. But hey, we're, you know, okay, 20 years too late, maybe 15. But, but still, regardless, it's it's but holy even, sh it's a holy sh moment. Just the guys standing in the ring with one another is going to get chance. The electricity is going to be off the charts, Dutch. But even for young fans, if they stood in the ring, it's history. Yeah. It's history being made, and it's like saying, I was there. And a lot of people would like to say that. A lot of people would like to see it. I'd like to see it because you don't get these chances very often. And whatever they do with this is, uh, I think it would be well orchestrated, well produced, well executed. All right. Well, there's going to be a lot that's going to be said, written, talked about with John Cena over the next 18 months or so so uh let, let, let's save some of that for now sp3 brought up the women's money in the bank ladder match match of the night holy sh girls best, best match of the night oh my lord hey my girl was in there chelsea a car she crash there. and she was the, the star she was no the kidding. most entertaining person in that matchup from her fear of heights to her using oh. a ladder to poke at it to bring it down <laughs> like someone who's trying to pull to get a box of chocolate she was trying to jump shelf. jump trying to jump down. at it had to jump she, and get she it is entertaining she the, unpre the unprettier on the ladder bridge and then at the end she pretty much could have just pulled off the briefcase but she's so scared of heights that she got startled by tiffany stratton climbing up next to her and then did she does the push and she does the bubba ray dudley matt hardy what, dive through what the two that tables. was what a bump that was i think it was the the best match of the night well produced and orchestrated i mean those yeah. girls worked hard and you know when a girl six six mans are hard three you know a six-man tag team is tough 
but they had six people in that. It, it, it's a it's a hard match to put together, but those girls did it, and it probably took up. Oh. Again, <laughs> there it is. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but uh, they spent a lot of time on that, and I'm glad they did because it got some people noticed. Yeah, uh, and, since we since we started doing this show, uh, there is a report that has come out uh, from Fightful Select. Uh, that says that Chelsea Green is getting massive praise within WWE for her performance. And not only that, the lead up to it and the promotional work that she did, both for the company and her work online, and the fact that, uh, quote unquote, she treated the big bump at the end of the night as a no big deal type situation. That is who <laughs> Chelsea Green is. Yeah. On screen, she she acts like she's incompetent and she she shocks herself when she does something good this woman has all the talent in the world. She's tough as nails, as is everybody else who was in this match. An off-the-ladder Michinoku driver through a ladder bridge. Are you f- language kidding me, Zoe Stark and EO Sky? EO, EO Sky looked EO like she had a seizure great. at the end of that thing. She was so damn proud of herself. EO Sky was great in that matchup as well, where she she just plays a great character and just aggressive, like stomping out out uh, Lyra's head while she was hanging from the ladder and stuff like that. It wasn't all smooth. I thought the the men's ladder match was you know smoother, a cleaner matchup. Uh, this one had a lot of missed time spots early on, but it's not always how you start; it's how you finish, and it got yeah. better and better as the match went along, and it had the biggest bumps and spots of the night from the Mishinoku driver to Chelsea's dive off the off the ladder at the end of the at the end of the matchup. This was just unhinged and it's the one thing that WWE ladder matches aren't anymore. It felt dangerous. It yeah. felt it felt like they were taking risks out there. Like WWE ladder match in general are very safe sound matchups and I don't want to see anybody get injured out there, but I like when it's a car crash. I like when it's a car crash because it gives me those vibes of the old TLC matches between Edge and Christian, the Hardys, and the Dudleys. And that's the vibe that this woman's ladder match had. Okay, what happened to Zoe Stark when she went over the top? What was she attempting to do? When she, she usually does like a little like flip uh, dive over the top rope onto somebody and she tried to do it onto somebody on the ladder but she completely missed them and hit the back of her head uh, so when, when she went to attempt that because I believe it was Lyra that was on the ladder I'm like too close to the ropes she's too close mm -hmm. to the ropes she's way too close to the ropes and then she overshot it and I'm like she was way too close to the ropes I'm like uh but and I, I felt bad for Zoe in that situation but she made up for it later like yeah. these matches don't need to look pretty they don't need to look choreograph you don't need these big monster setup spots you know like these big crash and burn spots like everything they did it felt like it just naturally progressed into those those situations and i think it was well produced it was well put together it was it was like those six ladies got together and said hey let, let's go prove something out there let's go make some new damn fans tonight and i think they succeeded i would like to know who who was the producer for that match Probably TJ Wilson. He usually is the producer right. on the women's matches. That would Who's be a safe this? bet. I haven't seen TJ Wilson. Probably. Well, he, was, he was good. Yeah, so sure. whoever, everybody played their role, even down to the producer. And I think it was the best match of the night. It was. For sure. Because Guys, from I, then on out, it kind of, kind of drug a little bit. I think. 